Contagious is a good word. Even in the times of H1N1, I like the word. Laughter is contagious. Passion is contagious. Inspiration is contagious. We've heard some remarkable stories from some remarkable speakers. But for me, what was contagious about all of them was that they were infected by something I call the I can bug. So the question is, why only them? In a country of a billion people and some, why so few? Is it luck? Is it chance? Can we all not systematically and consciously get infected? So in the next eight minutes, I would like to share with you my story. I got infected when I was 17, when as a student of the design college, I encountered adults who actually believed in my ideas, challenged me, and had lots of cups of chai with me. And I was struck by just how wonderful it felt and how contagious that feeling was. I also realized I should have got infected when I was seven. So when I started Riverside School 10 years ago, it became a lab, uh, a lab to prototype and refine a design process that could consciously infect the mind with the I can bug. And I uncovered that if learning is embedded in real world context, that is, if you blur the boundaries between school and life, then children go through a journey of aware, where they can see the change, enable, be changed, and then empower, lead the change. And that directly increased student well-being. Children became more competent and less helpless. But this is all common sense. So I'd like to show you a little glimpse of what common practice looks like at Riverside. A little background. Uh, when my grade five was learning about child rights, they were made to roll incense sticks, agarbattis, for eight hours to experience what it means to be a child laborer. They transformed them. What you will see is their journey and then their utter conviction that they could go out and change the world. That's them rolling. And in two hours after their backs broke, they were changed. And once that happened, they were out in the city, convincing everybody that child labor just had to be abolished. And look at Raghav. That moment when his face changes because he's been able to understand that he has shifted that man's mindset. And that can't happen in a classroom. So when Raghav experienced that, he went from teacher told me to I am doing it. And that's the I can mind shift. And it is a process that can be energized and nurtured. But we had parents who said, okay, making our children good human beings is all very well, but what about math and science and English? Show us the grades. And we did. The data was conclusive. When children are empowered, not only do they do good, they do well, in fact, very well. As you can see in this national benchmarking assessment taken by over 2,000 schools in India, Riverside children were outperforming the top 10 schools in India in math, English, and science. So it worked. It was now time to take it outside Riverside. So on August 15th, Independence Day 2007, the children of Riverside set out to infect Ahmedabad. Now it was not about Riverside School. It was about all children. So we were shameless. We walked into the offices of the municipal corporation, the police, the press, businesses, and basically said, when are you going to wake up and recognize the potential that resides in every child? When will you include the child in the city? Basically, open your hearts and your minds to the child. So how did the city respond? Since 2007, every other month, the city closes down the busiest streets for traffic and converts it into a playground for children and childhood. Here was a city telling its child, you can. A glimpse of infection in Ahmedabad. <laughs> so, the busiest streets closed down. We've had the traffic police and municipal corporation helping us. And gets taken over by children. They are skating. They are doing street plays. They are playing and all free for all children. Approach is an organization.
renovation which has been doing things for kids earlier and we plan to extend this to other parts of the city. And the citizens give free time. And Ahmedabad got the first child friendly zebra crossing in the world. When a city gives to the children, in the future the children will give back to the city. And because of that, Ahmedabad is known as India's first child friendly city. So you're getting the pattern. First 200 children at Riverside, then 30,000 children at, in Ahmedabad and growing. It was time now to infect India. So on August 15th, again, Independence Day, 2009, empowered with the same process, we empowered 100,000 children to say, I can. How? We designed a simple toolkit, converted into eight languages, and reached 32,000 schools. We basically gave children a very simple challenge. We said, take one idea, anything that bothers you, choose one week, and change a billion lives. And they did. Stories of change poured in from all over India. From Nagaland in the east to Junjunu in the west. From Sikkim in the north to Krishnagiri in the south. Children were designing solutions for a diverse range of problems. Right from loneliness to filling potholes on the street to alcoholism. And 32 children who stopped 16 child marriages in Rajasthan. I mean, it was incredible. Basically, again, reaffirming that when adults believe in children and say, you can, then they will. Infection in India. This is in Rajasthan, a rural village. First time, a rally and a street play in a rural school. Unheard of. To tell their parents why literacy is important. Girls and boys and Hyderabad going out. Pretty difficult, but they did it. It was a revelation for me. It doesn't strike me that they had so much inside them. Charter of Compassion stands right here. Street plays, auctions, petitions. I mean, they were changing lives. It was incredible. So how can we still stay immune? How can we stay immune to that passion, that energy, that excitement? I know it's obvious, but I have to end with the most powerful symbol of change, Gandhiji. 70 years ago, it took one man to infect an entire nation with the power of we can. So today, who is it going to take to spread the infection from 100,000 children to the 200 million children in India? Last I heard, the preamble still said, we the people of India, right? So if not us, then who? If not now, then when? Like I said, contagious is a good word. Thank you. Traffic is a global epidemic. US traffic is creating 45% of the world's air pollution. In the UK, time wasted in traffic costs 20 billion a year. Would you pay for cleaner air and a faster commute? Stockholm put it to a vote. I voted for it, yes. I voted for it. I vote for it. We're not old enough to vote. Vote. <laughs>
they had to do something in Stockholm to improve the environment and to get a better flow in the traffic. We put a price on taking your car into the central parts of Stockholm and we call that congestion charges. If you start a system like this and it doesn't work on the first day, then you will be in big trouble. It must be perfect from day one. There are 18 entry gates to the city. Each is equipped with cameras. Pictures are taken of the rear and front license plates. These pictures are sent to a central system that identifies the license plates and makes sure that the right person pays for the right passages. One of the obstacles we overcame was the OCR, the optical character reading of the license plate. We went out to IBM's global organization and the R&D centers and find a very good software we could use. And we managed to implement it in two months' time. This is the heart of the system where all images and passages are being processed. Over 99% of all pictures are correctly identified. So it's nice. This is how it should be all the time. Behind me you can see the traffic, and the clock is 6 p.m. Before we had the congestion charging, the traffic was chewing up at this time of the day. I think it's a good idea, because I think that we should take care of the environment in the city. The traffic went down with about 22%, and the air pollution was about 14% better. It's a huge international interest from different parts of the world, from uh, the United States, from Latin America, from China. And it's really a pleasure to tell people not what we are planning to do, but what we actually have done in Stockholm. I voted for it. Yes, I did. Not my husband, so <laughs> but I did. I think he is not thinking like me for the future. I'm thinking for the children and the grandchildren.